Well, welcome, welcome, everybody. <clears throat> I had a wonderful week. I hope you all did as well. Um, <clears throat> I would um, just just sitting there on the beach and listening to the water and being mm-hmm. under the palm. I'm, I know I'm really being mean to you, but she I need you to. It in. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, it's a desert island, but the. Uh, resort that we were at had the oldest palm trees you know so they were the really big ones and the tall ones and and we just had a joy sitting there and just doing nothing just at what time's lunch you know <laughs> that's, all we, that's all we have to worry about which which one do we want to go eat at you know those really horrible decisions <laughs> and um but as i was sitting there i just it was like um god kept whispering to me And saying, you know, I need you to understand that this next section of your life and all of our lives needs to have a hidden wisdom that we have not had. And to do this next section, uh, that's what's going to have to happen with the body of Christ. We are going to have to move to a whole different way of getting our wisdom than we've done in the past. And so... I want to start out by reading this in uh, 1 Corinthians, and it's called Wisdom from God, and I'm reading out of the Passion, and um, I just want to read this to kind of set the tone of of where we are so that you can hear what I think he's been trying to say to me. Uh, Most of you know that um, I was raised in a family where wisdom came only from education, We were born again, uh, but probably the lukewarmest sense you could be born again, you know. Very moral in that respect. Uh, Character was important, but wisdom, (laughs) okay. What you did in life, how you navigated life, what you uh, uh, talked about, didn't come from Scripture. And it didn't come from a personal relationship with Holy Spirit at all. The knowledge of Jesus was to get you born again. And that was pretty much it. <clears throat> so, uh, through all my years, uh, you know, up till probably 30, um, education was my God, even though I didn't recognize it and couldn't understand it. But when I wanted to look for truth, I looked in what I called now Greek thinking or rational thinking or logical thinking. thinking. <clears throat> never having any clue, let me make that clear, that I was opposing God. Because, you know, that's what had been lifted up with me. <clears throat> so when I wanted wisdom, I wrote, I, I read the people that had done what I wanted to do and what their books were, what they said, okay. <clears throat> and I can remember when my children were little, my mother handed me a book by... Dr. Spock, okay, and some of you older people will remember that well, okay, <clears throat> and she said, this is the encyclopedia on raising children, and so I would read some of this, and I'd think, this man's insane, okay, and I'd think, everybody in this generation has raised their children according to this man, and I would just have these inklings of thoughts, like, what on earth, okay, So then I researched him. He was the most horrible father on the planet, okay? Some of his children had even committed suicide because of the thing. Uh, I mean, outrageous, okay? Outrageous things. And yet he was the premier P, okay? He was the premier doctor because he did things that gave these parents tools they no longer had because they had all become mobile and they'd moved away from their grandparents and their parents and they were out there on their own and they didn't know what to do when they had a fever and they didn't know what to do when they had this. And this was a how-to manual on what to do. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. When this child is messed up. And I kept my mother's Spock because I used it. Never, ever. (laughs) But that's an example of how I would seek the wisdom of someone that had enough degrees to tell me this is wisdom. Okay. 
So around 30, God started seriously messing with that. And one of the first things he did is he said, <laughs> he gave me this word. And I had been spirit filled about, oh, I don't know, seven, eight months, something like that. And so I would practice praying in the spirit all the time. I mean, it would be hours and hours a day. And I started saying this word, Shekinah. And I would look it up in the scripture and there's no such word. And I'd think, what on earth? What is this word? Why do I keep hearing this word? Okay. <laughs> and I was sitting in um, a board meeting. And somebody says, well, the Shekinah glory came down. And I said, the what? What did you say? Because it's the first time I'd ever heard anybody else say the word. And he said, you know, the glory of God. You know how the old timers are. You know, the glory of God came down. And we all felt it. And we could feel it. And he would go on and on and on. I go, no, I don't. Tell me, what are you talking about? Okay. And I says, what is this Shekinah? What is this Shekinah? And he said, well, and at that time I didn't have any Hebrew, you know, anything. I didn't even realize the scripture wasn't written in English. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he said, Shekinah is the, the visible or physical presence of God. Okay. So like when the cloud came down and they could see it or the fire, that's Shekinah. Okay. So Shekinah became a tangible thing where you could touch. Well, what God eventually did is my very first private uh, business for me was in educational services. And it's where I would take learning disabled students and uh, do therapy with them. So I did dyslexia, dysgraphia, all the different things. But I had a non-traditional approach in that I combined medical knowledge with education knowledge. And in each of these disciplines, you never combined anything, okay? You were either all education mm -hmm. or you were all medical. And you never took from anybody else's discipline. That was like a big football, okay? You didn't do that. <clears throat> so, I had uh, been trained by these medical people that had learned to teach people to come back from a stroke. In other words, they had to retrain part of the, uh, the brain to do these particular functions. And what I learned is all these poor children that had dyslexia, dysgraphia, you know, auditory processing, all these other problems, I could actually use that same technique on them to get them out of being, quote, learning disabled. Okay. And so <clears throat> when God gave me all this, he says, you're supposed to call this Shekinah educational services and so that's what I started doing and the fruits of it were unbelievable because I could just I would pray in the spirit I would get these kids to a whole different level and there was a hidden wisdom that's what I want to share with you there was a hidden wisdom that he would reveal to me because it was like I was spiritually reading these children rather than just doing the test with them so even though this test showed this I could see in the spirit, well, that might show that, but this is what's really wrong. And so he would supernaturally let me navigate all this in an interesting way. <clears throat> so I'm saying all that because it is that Shekinah glory that we're going to have to operate in to do these next seasons. These next seasons are where it has to be tangible to you. It has to be something that you're not just praying in the spirit to just hear yourself talk. It's where you're actually doing spiritual exchange as you're praying in the spirit. Because the wisdom that we are going to need for this next season specifically in the body of Christ cannot come from man. It cannot come from these other people that have written the books and have the degrees. That's okay. I mean, I got the degrees too, okay? I use them to open doors all the time, but that's about all. They, they're they a big doorstop. That's what they are. It's just to keep the door open, okay? Because what I'm then bringing in, they think it's because of the big degrees. What I'm then bringing in is something totally different from what the degrees are saying. But they don't know that till the door's already open and it's too late. 
<coughs> so sorry. Yeah, I am a little sneaky on that. Because I wouldn't have gotten that if people hadn't helped me with that. So there is a hidden wisdom. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. How to get into that place or how I've, I've done it. So we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'm going to start with verse 6. <clears throat> okay. However, there is a wisdom that we continually speak of when we are among the spiritually mature. Code word. <laughs> those who get their wisdom from God, not those who get their wisdom from the God of education. It's wisdom that didn't originate in this present age, nor did it come from the rulers of this age who are in the process of being dethroned. I want you to think about that. They're talking about uh, the demonic principalities. They're talking about the rulers those demonic principalities have put in place. The kings, the priests, the different people that they've put in place. And they're being dith dethroned. So you'd have to think about this. During the Roman era, they would have been some seriously bad people up in those places in the natural as well as in the spiritual or demonic realm. Instead, we continually speak of this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in a mystery. And the mystery, and let me just read to you, it, the mystery means that it's something so profound, it is beyond the scope of human ingenuity and unobtainable by human reasoning. Wisdom comes from above and is given to those who love God and live in awe of him. That's what this uh, mystery is. It is a secret plan destined before the ages to bring us into glory. I think so often we think of glory as something as we have to wait for God to bring it to us. Okay. Glory is in a different dimension. And he wants to take you into that dimension. And he wants you to stay in that dimension all the time he's not interested for you to go back and forth and all of us think we can't function in the natural if we're woo wooed out in the glory realm okay but that's not true there's a glory realm that you can operate in where you may be a little ditzy I don't know depending on how you all have handled glory before it takes a while to get used to but it is something he's trying to say he wants to bring it to you right now, and he wants you to have this as your source of continual wisdom every second, even in the bathroom, even in the kitchen, even driving the car, okay, every second. So it is a secret plant destined before the ages to bring us into glory. None of the rulers of this present world order, isn't that an interesting way to say it, understood it. For if they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of shining glory. They would never have crucified him. They would have never done that because his glory, he lived in that glory. He lived in that place where, you know, total strangers were drawn to him. We often talk about that. You know, it's like a charisma person or a charismatic person. Everybody's just drawn to them, wants to be with them. But this is something that was drawing all these people, people to Jesus. And it was that glory that he lived in like that. That is why, this is why the scripture says, things never discovered or heard of before, things beyond our ability to imagine. These are the many things God has in store for all of his lovers. Now, isn't it interesting? <laughs> let me read you. Um, let me get to that place here. This is the scripture from Isaiah 64, 4 is what I just read. But I want you to listen to that. These are the many things God has in store for his lovers. Okay. I think that's a key for us. Uh, I have a lot of people that want to have the knowledge of God but they don't want to be a lover of God. They want to be a Greek 
let me figure out the thing. I have this one man in my life <clears throat> that he's in a national leadership. And if you're around him for very long, he can spout all the um, intelligent things about the scripture. And he can give you list and list of what we should be doing and list and list of you know, how we should be acting. He was highly offended with all the prophetic stuff that came out around the election. Okay. Because they were not following his rules. <clears throat> and he even then began to uh, get his group and his organization to come against the very prophets that were speaking. Because they had come out of their boundaries. You hear what I'm saying? They'd come out of their boundaries and they were saying things that they were not being rooted and grounded. And they, he would quote, everything he quoted was a scripture. Okay. <clears throat> but the thing that hit me the most was he loved knowledge and he loved for people to know he had knowledge. But I couldn't see the evidence that he was a lover of God. I mean... Um, you didn't see him you saw him wanting to bring an, an educational mindset to the people of Christ not a compassion mindset not a we do this because we love somebody okay and that was very hard so think about that things never discovered or heard of before this is from Isaiah this is in the Old Testament this is what they prophesied was about to happen to us in this time. Things beyond our ability to imagine. Now, I have a vivid, 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 Gary says it's overactive, it's been messed up since a childhood, and I can't turn it off, imagination. So I can just sit here and be like a Walter Mitty any time of the day. Okay, let's just take that, wow, you know, we'll go somewhere. <clears throat> But it makes me see things in a different way. I see things like movies. I see things playing out like colors and, and different things like this. But can you imagine what he is trying to say that we can't even have the ability to imagine? Well, let me give you some ideas. What if we were able to get into some of those dimensions where we no longer had to be bound by the natural laws that rule the earth? I mean, hello. That would be a whole new place. Okay. What if you had the ability to walk into a dimension of glory in which when someone came in, you could instantly see what the enemy had planned for their lives and you could know what did you need to pray so the enemy couldn't fulfill it. Wouldn't that be amazing? What if when we start to feel a little cold coming on or something like that, we could instantly be in that dimension where we say, this is from the enemy, and I no longer have to do this, so remove yourself from me. And it would be done like that. Can you imagine that place? Yeah. You have to be able to imagine the place before you can go there. I think so many people think, well, there'll be, you know, ways we can follow. You have to be able to imagine it. He wants to put it into your spiritual imagination, your spiritual ability to see it. And I think what happens is so often it freaks people out to the point they go, that's not normal and I don't want that. I mean, that is just wrong. I don't want to be woo-woo like Yolanda. <clears throat> I know they say that. <laughs> They've said it to me. <laughs> no, I didn't want to be like you. Is there a before that? Can I get the step before that? <clears throat> okay. But God now unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit, who constantly explores all things. How many things? All things. You ought to do a word study on all things. Mm -hmm. I think I even taught on that several times. Doing all things things, because that means literally all things. Mm -hmm. After all, who can really see into a person's heart 
and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit. So it is with God. His thoughts and his secrets are only fully understood by his spirit, the spirit of God, which desires to live inside of you wholly, completely. He desires to take over all the dimensions inside of you. This is the same spirit that knows God's heart. Do you understand that? And he wants to be inside of us, but we block him because we have wisdom. So we don't need new wisdom if we've already got wisdom. Yeah, so wrong, aren't we? For we did not receive the spirit of this world system. Another way of saying that would be the religious system. We didn't receive that. But we received the spirit of God so that we might come to understand and experience all that grace has lavished upon us. What I didn't realize for years was God was lavishing these things upon me, but I wasn't aware enough of them that I even recognized them. Okay? I wasn't even aware enough that he was sending these blessings to me or these graces to me because I didn't recognize them for what they were. Okay? They were, okay, that was good. I can breathe now. Okay? And I never went, why can I breathe now? Why, why is the pressure gone now? Why am I not feeling this now? I never put it together until I understand. These, this is what he wants to lavish upon us. He wants us all to walk in a place where, like, as much as I was checked out on the beach in Aruba, he wants us to be checked out and so comfortable in him that that's how much stress we have. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I've learned. There are stresses. There are all kinds of pressures from the enemy. We're living in a fallen world that we have not yet reclaimed back. We're supposed to be doing it. But we at some point have to start somewhere. So the somewhere you have to start is with you. You have to start claiming back you. You have to start claiming back the stresses that are on you. And really realize Is Holy Spirit demanding you walk in that level of total, absolute chaos and pressure? Is he demanding that? If if he's giving you that much pressure, if it is from Holy Spirit, he will give you the grace and the ability to walk as if you're the same without it. You need to hear that. Because... He says there is nothing he's going to ask us to do that he will not give us the tools and the equipment to do it with. But what we've done is not picked up his tools or his equipment. We've just walked into the things. And I did that for years and years. I would, you know, be doing all these holy things, okay? All these committees, all these organizations, all this work, all this stuff, doing all this. And it, you know, creates stress no matter what you're you know, time frames, pressures, that kind of thing. But I would think it was important because it was a good thing. So I was doing good work. But what it was doing is killing my body. Okay. It was killing my body. And I had a strong enough will that I would just say, well, that's, if I die, I die, go to heaven, then we can quit. Okay, you know, whatever. I didn't, it, it had no effect on me in that, You better do something different. And what he was trying to teach me is when I put the stresses on because I'm asking you to do things, I'm asking you to be a breaker in anointing, or I'm asking you to create something new. When I put those pressures on you, they should feel the same as the ones 10 years ago. Because I have to increase the pressure out to them. I've told you this before. I have to open up the shalom inside of me. I have to open up the glory inside of me so it pushes that stress out so that I can still do the job, but I'm still not under the pressure of the stress. Does that make sense? And if you don't make that transition, 
all you do is just beat yourself down. We all know adrenals. We all know how that goes. You'll just eventually have your adrenal glands so worn out, you can't do anything else. And then every system starts messing up. So this is what I think he's trying to share with us. There are these lavishes. There are these <coughs> graces. And I think there are many, many, many graces. I think we've not understood grace. There are many, many, many graces. And when he's trying to lavish these graces on us, you know, even when Jesus did the most impossible thing, which was the sufferings in the garden and the persecution and the betrayals and the beatings from the officials and being nailed to a cross and then giving his life. Even in all of that, and that was horrible beyond horrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible beyond horrible. You saw that God kept giving him the ability to walk it out. And I don't think we met, we, we think that's because he was his son. I got news for you. An adopted child mm -hmm. is more legally bound to the parent than their own biologicals. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. So we, in the father's eyes, are so much the sons and daughters, so much greater. So let me read that last sentence again. For we did not receive the spirit of this world system, which I did. That's who I thought God was. But we received the Spirit of God so that we might come to understand and experience all that grace has lavished upon us. For we articulate these realities with the words imparted to us by the Spirit and not the words taught by human wisdom. The first time I read that, I was blown away because all I'd ever been taught was human wisdom. They can even teach you human wisdom about the scripture. Okay? And I didn't understand. This is not what he was wanting. So he says, we join together spirit revealed truths. That's what this is. Spirit revealed truths with spirit revealed truths words so when we put the two together it becomes solidified inside of us that when we hear the human wisdom it no longer has the pull it no longer I don't care how many doctorates you have that's not what's truth and it puts you in a place where you can receive that truth the spirit of the living God I want you to understand, just like you have a spirit inside of you, the triune spirit of the living God desires to bring to you that his hidden wisdom. You get that? We just kind of fluff that off. Oh, I got Holy Spirit. Well, that's great. But then you only have a measure of him because you have so many blocks keeping him from there. Someone living on an entirely human level, which we all have to recognize, many of us were there, we're slowly coming out of it. They re it rejects the revelations of God's spirit, for they make no sense to him. We as humans are always comparing, is this truth? How do we know this is truth? Can we test it to see if this is truth? And so we do all the litmus tests of logical reasoning thinking to decide if this is truth or not where America is right now. Can you see that? When someone comes in and says, you have to wear a mask. Now you're vaccinated, but you still have to wear a mask. Now you're this, but you still have to wear a mask. And never having any clue that the mask cannot keep out that COVID virus. They cannot keep it out. The virus is so tiny, the only mask it won't go through is a surgical mask called the N95. That's it. <laughs> Do you hear that wisdom anywhere? <clears throat> Nowhere. Because it does not serve the purpose for the human wisdom that they are sticking out. So what we do is we listen to those that we think should have the wisdom, that think they should have the 
the tools at hand to do that. And yet the spirit of the living God is trying to teach us a higher wisdom, a different wisdom. So someone living on the entirely human level rejects the revelations of God's spirit for they make no sense to him. How many of you have tried to make sense to someone that believes the other stuff? How's that going for you? Yeah, it's like the guy who I was telling the girls before you guys got here. On vacation, he said, well, if it means my personal freedoms over him dying, I will wear the mask. <laughs> oh, for the cause, because, you know, I'm, I'm willing to not make you die because I'm not wearing a mask. And Gary just looked at me and I just went right off on him and helped him understand scientifically that everything he thought was not true. Gary was a little upset. We're on vacation! <laughs> Did it work? Oh, it, no. Not really. <clears throat> okay, because again, who does he trust? Dr. Fauci. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Spock. Dr. 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 Spock. Flo on vacation with the insurance company. You what? The commercial with Flo. Oh, yes. On the, on on the, the vacation. Yeah. Yes, that's so good. That's pretty much like it was. There you go. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. The wisdom we trust in, and we all do this, if we've had experiential knowledge, that's one of the hardest wisdoms to get rid of. Are you listening to me? Experiential knowledge means you've experienced this yourself consistently over and over again, possibly the way people treat you over and over again, so therefore you think this is the way you will always be treated. Okay. That experiential knowledge is really hard to get rid of. Because it's in every cell of your body vibrating. This is what's going to happen. When I do this, this is what's going to happen. But that's why the whole deliverance situation and the whole healing situation is so important. Because until you shut that experiential wisdom or knowledge down and take away its frequency, you can't hear the Holy Spirit's frequency. You can't hear it. You can't hear it. Because your wisdom has a louder sound than his does. He's not going to come in. I, you know, sometimes wish, couldn't you just come in and just smash him? And he goes, no, that's not how this works. I thought it was a good technique. Let's just slam them. You know, let's just overwhelm them with the knowledge of God. He goes, no, that it could implode is actually what would happen. And that's what happens in churches. Look around to your churches. When you have a big blow up in a church, what happens is the Holy Spirit comes in in some form of fashion. And because the people aren't ready, the Holy Spirit comes in and it will implode a lot of times a church. Because those that have Holy Spirit can see it and those that don't have him can't. And it just makes the whole thing, does it? How many, how many of you have seen that over and over and over again? So this is why I say so we don't want to be living on just a human level. Um, you know, it's, it's like saying you just live with the natural man. And that's what I did for so, so many men. Uh, another way of translating that would be a man in his natural self cannot receive spiritual concepts. And that is so true. If that's where your wisdom is. He cannot understand the revelations of the Spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the Spirit. So those who live in the Spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things again, and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. I want you to understand all things literally means all things. Um, I cannot tell you how many times the Holy Spirit says, don't do this. And everybody in conventional wisdom has said, do it. And the Holy Spirit would say to me, don't do this. And I'd think, well, you know, it's not that big a deal. It's not that. And he'd say, don't do this. I'd find out later why I didn't do this. But if I had gone along with everybody else doing it, I'd have been at that point. So he's trying to give us that ability to realize all things. Um, I remember when he told me, uh, you have to change your toothpaste. And I go, my toothpaste? <laughs> <laughs> I like my toothpaste. 
He goes, no, you need to change your toothpaste. And I go, well, what would you like me to change my toothpaste to? Okay, you know what I'm saying? You're thinking, you know, what would God say? How do you brush your teeth? You hear what I'm saying? I, I know you guys think it's crazy. Um, so. What brand is he saying? Yeah, I was going to say. God bless the man. So. I went to the dentist. I had a dentist appointment for my yearly exam that next week. And the dentist I was at at the time said, well, your gums are uh, all messed up. They have a disease. Um, They're 50% removed from your uh, teeth, and we're going to have to do surgery. And I'm thinking, "Uh, I need to go hear what toothpaste God wants me to do. (laughs) Okay, I really need to go back and listen to that. Okay. <clears throat> so, I changed dentist. Okay, <laughs> that's my first rule. And the second dentist was an old school dentist. And I, he says, yeah, you do have some separation of your gums from your teeth. And he said, but what they don't tell you is, is it's a fifty fifty shot if the surgery will work. Fifty fifty. And I says, well, let's just not do that fifty that requires surgery. We'll just not do some. So I went back home and I said, okay, Holy Spirit, what was that toothpaste again? <laughs> okay. So he literally gave me a name of a side place that I had been using other products from them, you know, like um, how you have all these distributors and different things, but I'd not used their toothpaste. So <clears throat> I got the toothpaste because in my mind, I was remembering the years I did the Melaleuca toothpaste. How many of you all remember Melo Luca? And I had to talk to myself every day before I brushed my teeth so I could brush my teeth because that just tasted so nasty. Okay. So I was thinking in terms of this is what was going to happen. So he had me buy uh, some toothpaste from this company. So I started brushing my teeth with this toothpaste. Within six months, I no longer had separation from my teeth. Do you hear what the Holy Spirit wants to do for you? Okay. So, but we don't believe all things. We just being the big spiritual ones, you know, like when we come to church. No, 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 no. He's interested in your toothpaste. Okay. He's interested in what you drink. He's interested in what you think. And that's where we are right now. So let me finish this out, and then I want to share that. Those who live in the Spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things, and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. For who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord Yahweh well enough to become his counselor? Christ has, and we possess Christ's perceptions. <clears throat> um, what he's wanting to do is start with us first. Our thinking has to get so on board with him. And most of us just let our minds run through the garbage. I'm going to put it that way. Okay. Um, I used to think if I didn't speak it out loud, I got so you know convicted over words have power, that I thought if I didn't speak it out loud, it's okay to still think all this stuff in my head. Okay. I could convince myself. I could have whole dialogues, you know, whole things going on in my head. But no one would know it because I didn't say it. Therefore, I was still looking like the holy person. Okay. <clears throat> and God, that's when after he took me through quantum physics and understanding all of that, I began to realize that your thoughts, is everybody listening? Your thoughts have power like your words. Your thoughts have frequency. You don't think they have frequency because your ears don't hear them. So you're thinking it's no big deal to have that thought. It's no big deal to say, gosh, that looks ugly. (laughs) Okay. Or God, you know, this is just such a horrible situation. Somebody should do something about it, but not me. Um. So he began years and years ago to teach me how to take, capture my thoughts. You know how if we drop food, what do we all yell? 
Three second rule, ten second rule, depending on who you are. Okay, in my husband's world, it was the ten second rule. Some people, is that what it is? Five second rule, three second. Rule. Everybody's yelling, you know. They say, "Go to." I'm like, I don't care if it's on the floor; it's done. Okay, well, to me, it's done. Okay. I don't care. I know what's on the floor. Okay, and I'm not eating it. <clears throat> so, you need to get that kind of in your head. Do you have a three second rule for your thoughts? You need a three second rule for your thoughts. But what we've created is you have all these lovely memory channels in your head. They're little memory patterns that have been there. So every time you start a thought, it just goes to the next thought and the next thought and the next thought and the next thought and the next thought. And it's a memory channel. Depending on how much you've used that channel, it's how deep it is. It's the example when we're teaching children to write. For the very first time, we always want them to write the A really big, at least a foot and a half. Okay. We want them to write it really big. And I always have them write cursive rather than um, print because printing leads to t- staccato thinking. Printing leads to ch- 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 and there is no continuation or flow. What have they done to our children today? You, you don't even see children that can even read cursive. Okay. But do they have connective thought? No, they do not. Connective thought is really difficult for them. Like take this and build on this and take that away and add that. They don't have that. Think about that. It's because we removed the cursive. So when I'm wanting a child to learn that, I will have them write a big cursive A. Some people call it Danillion, where they put the tails on them. <clears throat> Pute. Why? Because it leaves a deeper memory track in their head. So when I have them, if they write this little bitty one, it's not a very deep memory track. But if I have them write a really big one, it is a deep memory track. To the point that when they narrow it down and make it small to put on a page or a line, they still fall into that deep memory track, okay? So it's easy for them. To them, they're still doing this big thing, even though it's a little one, because it's the same memory track. You have memory tracks that your thoughts have been going through. And what you do is once you start on that deep track, it's like being in a rut. It's really difficult to get back out of that rut. So what God's trying to say to us today is, this is where we start. You want the hidden wisdom? You want the wisdom of God? You gotta stop falling into the deep memory tracks of human wisdom. You can't do that. And that's where, I mean, I know I was there. I mean, it would took for, I still wrestle with it on certain issues because it's so familiar. The minute I start thinking, I just go right down that trail and I don't catch it. So I asked Holy Spirit, who is this amazing, amazing ability to send an alarm off in my head the minute I start down that memory track. So there's like a three second rule, bing! Okay, okay, okay. You know, do whatever you gotta do to get yourself to not think on that. What happens is we get in pressure or stressful situations, it's very difficult to remember the thinking rule, (laughs) isn't it? You're just, all that pressure's coming in and you're like, oh my goodness, I have to decide. (gasps) You know, and nothing, and probably the area that works on me the most still is my children, okay? There's still that, um, when I don't know where they are or when they call and said, we've had an accident or we've had, you know, There's just this, uh, you hear what I'm saying? Okay, and I have to really work to take authority over that because if I don't, immediately I'm going thinking the worst. Okay, I'm creating scenarios. I'm like, okay, and so uh, oftentimes my children and grandchildren will send me things like, pray in the spirit. Anything specific you want me to? No, just pray in the spirit for me. <gasps> yeah, 
Yeah. You hear your mind goes. Mind goes. Fling! Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. What are they into? What have they done? What have they got? You know, what have they got? You, that's what you take captive. Because what you are sending out to them is even encompassing them. So I've learned to, and, and like I said, it's one of my harder things that I'm still dealing with. Uh, that as soon as that happens, I go, no, because I can feel the adrenaline just going through me. I can feel it just spiking, you know, like, oh my gosh, I haven't been praying for them hard enough if they're needing me to pray in the spirit for them, you know, whatever. That's where we take this thought. So <clears throat> let me read to you some hidden wisdom scriptures for you. And then we'll see if we have any questions. Um. Because I want to talk to you about the hidden things. Uh, for years, I was taught that this hidden thing was the um, the hidden mystery was just the mystery that God was going to reconcile us all back to Him through Jesus, and that now that hidden thing has been revealed because it was the fact that we could become born again. Okay. I do believe that was one of the hidden things. Okay. I'm not saying it wasn't. But it's not the only one. And it has been taught as if that's the only one. So now you have that one. You don't need to go hunt for deeper wisdom, okay? You don't need to go hunt for hidden wisdom on anything else. But the word hidden is literally a verb. And it simply means to hide or conceal or keep a secret, okay? Um, so in Luke ten twenty one, this is actually uh, Jesus. And at the very time, he rejoiced greatly in the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for doing so was well-pleasing in your sight. Um, You know, the religious people at the time knew the Old Testament. They knew the scripture. They knew all that. And their wisdom, even though they would have never said it was human wisdom, was based on the revelation of what they could get via the Torah, via the Old Testament writings and things like that. The Holy Spirit had not yet been given. Let's remember that. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit had not yet been given to them. He would often be given in certain uh, places and situations to certain men. David. Remember how many times David said, don't take your spirit away from me? Mm -hmm. Because he recognized when that spirit would come in, he could feel that thing. Samuel, all the different ones, you could see that the Spirit of the Lord would come in and be with them. But the average Pharisee, Sadducee, they did not have the Spirit of God living inside of them because he had not yet been given. <clears throat> um, we read the one, 1 Corinthians 2.7 today. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. Did you get that part? It wasn't his glory. It was for our glory. We are supposed to carry glory. We're supposed to be glory carriers. I say this over and over again. Everybody fills up with his glory, but they're like sieves, and the glory runs out before they can actually carry it to some place. So we've got to learn to plug up our sieves. Okay. It's because we're holy. It's because we're holy. Yeah. I love that. Our pun of the day. I know. There we go. Amen. Ephesians 3, 9 says, And to enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is which for ages has been hidden in God, who created all things. So again, he's wanting to enlighten us. He's wanting to bring us. I very seldom use the word enlighten because the New Age is so 
trampled all over it and you know confiscated it in every way but it is an enlightenment it literally is it's where we're no longer using the wisdom of man even to interpret our scriptures when i would use the wisdom of man to interpret the scriptures i got back the wisdom of man when the Holy Spirit told me after many months of reading the scripture and telling Holy Spirit what it meant, when he said to me, you know, this will work better if you let me tell you what it says. What a thought. And that's when it changed. That's when I start, started getting the veils ripped off and I could see more. Colossians 1.26. That is the mystery which had been hidden from the past ages and generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. So I propose to you today that there is a hidden wisdom that we have not even touched. There is a hidden wisdom that allows you to transcend dimensions to get to a place where the enemy can no longer touch certain areas in you. There's, a, there's a, a glory place. I believe all the dimensions are dimensions of glory. They're dimensions of God's names, his characters, who he is, and he is, his wisdom is lavished on us in those graces. So there are these dimensions that are accessible to us right now. But we're going to have to let go of, and that's the very difficult part, we're going to have to let go of our preconceived ideas and notions of what is really truth. And the truth is, setting in this room is divine health. Yes, amen. Setting in this very room is the dimension of divine health. Setting in this very room is the dimension of provision. And we have full access to it from his side. The reason we're not penetrating it or occupying that dimension is us. Because we've hung on to our thinking We've hung on to the natural wisdom. You know, in my mind, I realize I can literally stand up and literally walk on air all the way through the door. I know that is the potential. Mm -hmm. But how many of us are willing to pay a price to remove that natural stuff mm -hmm. so we can do that? The things Jesus did, he said, greater things will you and I do. We're not even doing the things he did. Right. You know, just aim for that. Forget the other stuff. Just aim for that. So, today I want to share, for us to go to this next place, it is a hidden wisdom. It is a glory place. For you and I to carry the glory constantly with us, you need to fill up the sieve holes. You need to remove the veils that say this is the truth. You've been told all your life you cannot fly. <clears throat> Haven't you? Mm -hmm. Some of my children I had to tell them more than once because they were actually jumping off roofs and <laughs> things like that. But you can't fly. And I remember thinking about it later. God says, why are you telling him that? Because it will hurt, okay? And he goes, those are natural laws. Think about that. Now, I'm not advocating you all go jump off your roof. I'm advocating you stand still, and when he lifts you up, then you can fly. You see the difference? That's why I tell people about medication. Um... As long as your physical body is going to need that until you get the revelation you have the healing 
and you are healed, don't give the enemy an open door to bring you damage. Just don't. Sanctify your medication if you have to. Set it apart. Put the blood of Jesus on it. Do whatever you need to do. But do it with the intent that I'm going to a glory realm where I no longer need this. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be so impressive that if we as a congregation and as a group and as an apostolic center could so command the atmosphere that all of those dimensions could be present anytime someone set foot on the property. Yes, amen. Now we talk about them, we think about them, but what are we actually doing to get it? The word says you have to worship in spirit and in truth. A lot of people like the spirit part because they don't have to do too much. They just kind of go with the spirit. What about the truth part? So when I took the ceilings off of me, that's what I encourage you to do today. Take the ceilings that men, conventional human wisdom, education, religious denominations, take those ceilings off. Because if you don't, you can't go into those dimensions. So, he says it's hidden from all these wise and intelligent people. And it's given to the infants, to the spiritually mature. Well, we all know, you know, when you travel, you get to see a lot of parenting styles. (laughs) (laughs) And when you travel to places where you see cultural parenting styles, There was this one group from another country and they had, you know, everybody has the strollers now so that they don't, their babies don't have to walk or do anything, you know, and it's easier to strap them in. We all know that, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're traveling, you don't have to. Okay. When this five-year-old crawled out of the stroller (laughs) and then he crawled back in and he started whining. And the parents were all trying to console him. Holy Spirit says, that's the body of Christ. I go, could you not use these revelations with people and their children, please? Just let me, let me walk through the airport. Let me just get to my place. I don't, I don't want to see these death. He goes, that is the body of Christ. They want someone to push them, someone to rock them, someone to feed them. Someone to change their nappy. <laughs> I heard that a lot. Did you change his nappy? And to console them while they whine because they're not getting what they want. So, I'll just encourage us. Let's get out of the stroller. Let's, let's be lovers of God. Let's be his infants all over again so he can nourish us and he can feed us. Let's come into a place of being in his presence. It's not so important that you're just in his presence. It's that his presence goes with you everywhere. We've all had those beautiful worship times where we can go into our whatever everybody else is away and we can be with him. Those are valuable. Those are good. I'm not saying they're not. What is better (laughs) is that you take that with you to the world. We call it bedroom worship or throne room worship. There's a whole group here in America that is very, 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 very good at bedroom worship. They can get you into the presence of God. You can walk into the atmosphere. You can feel it. And no one wants to leave. Because when they leave, the presence stays there. It doesn't go with them. 
throne room worship is recognizing we each individually need our bedroom worship. We each do. But throne room means I can now carry it. I can now carry it with me. And when I go out, the presence of the almighty living God goes with me. And his glory is now my glory on me. And it so is there, it draws people and radiates to people. And it brings to people healing and wisdom and everything else. Just because they're in the presence of God, which I long to carry into a dying world. I can't go kick the enemy out of anything if I can't carry the glory of God with me to do it. Too many people have been wounded warriors because they went out armed with the word of God. They were, went out armed with scripture and knowing that they were supposed to fight. But they didn't carry the presence of God with them. And the enemy knows that. And he'll just wait until there's an open door to get them. If you carry Judah first, if you carry the presence of God with you, they think Jesus has arrived on the battlefield. It's a different way of doing it. And that's the way we need to do our lives. We need to do our lives. So yes, I have bedroom worship. Yes, I have bathroom worship. Yes, I have kitchen worship. Yes, I have living room worship where I bring it to the public. But when I leave my house, it doesn't stay there. It goes with me. And that is a totally different worship. So, so many people think that you've got to get into this worship. We've all got to get into this worship place. And they, that's why they come on Sundays. Because they want to be in that worship. They want to be in that presence of God. Where somebody else has done the work. <laughs> right? To pull you in. But what would happen if we all came filled up with his throne room presence? Can you imagine what that would be like? Inner worship. Huh? Elevation worship. Elevation worship. It would be a whole different dimension. Because then we wouldn't have to work you guys up. (laughs) Everybody would come in. So the hidden wisdom of God is that he has revealed it to you. He has made it accessible. It is you and I that are denying going in there. So when your life isn't what you want it, hello, stop whining at the kid in the stroller. Get out (laughs) and start walking. Okay?